Uh, this is a live picture from Cape Canaveral. We just heard T minus 30 seconds. This is the SpaceX rocket, the Falcon 9, which is uh, about to lift off. Um, yeah, it's happening in Cape Canaveral tonight. 10, it's uh, 9, hopefully going 8, to land. Let's just 7, watch it take off 6, for a second. We'll talk about 5, it in a second. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. We have liftoff of the Falcon 9. What appears to be a successful launch of the SpaceX rocket, the Falcon 9. You know, the primary mission of this launch is to take 11 next generation communication satellites into orbit for Orbcom, each of them weighing about 400 pounds. The company, of course, has been waiting for months for this launch. Um, this is Michael and Hammersley, you, Materials Engineer. You can hear the crowd cheering. And this is really a new breed of companies that are driving innovations in space exploration and in space. And as you can see tonight, um, this team, this SpaceX team, is really pushing the envelope on space travel. A ship like no other, its place in history is secured. The space shuttle pulls into port for the last time. When NASA landed a shuttle for the last time in Cape Canaveral, Florida in 2011, its mission of delivering payloads to space came to an historic close. Left in its wake, a race to space between traditional air and defense contractors and self-made billionaires. The result has been innovations never before imagined, like the development of reusable rockets, which would trim costs and change completely how mankind approaches spaceflight. With the space shuttle grounded, NASA hired Orbital ATK for $1.9 billion to fly cargo missions to the International Space Station. Its Cygnus capsule arrived at the ISS two weeks ago, delivering thousands of pounds of equipment on a rocket purchased from Lockheed Martin and Boeing. SpaceX, founded by Tesla's Elon Musk, has several launches under its belt using its own rockets. NASA is reportedly paying $2.6 billion for SpaceX to transport crews to the space station by 2017. In 2012, SpaceX's Dragon became the first spacecraft in history to deliver cargo to the ISS. But it has been a rough go for SpaceX and the re-entry part of its mission. Three previous attempts to land the rocket for future use have failed, including this one in April, when the rocket blew into pieces moments after touching down on a floating barge. But unlike those attempts, Blue Origin's New Shepard, backed by Amazon's Jeff Bezos, got it right first. History was made last month when the rocket gently touched down on a landing pad in West Texas. Bezos' vehicle actually went up close to 400,000 feet. So he, it actually went into space and then came back down and landed under, you know, rocket engine propulsion. The idea to make Blue Origin and the new Shepard capsule, named for the first American in space, Alan Shepard, available to companies and individuals so that space travel becomes almost second nature. Say you took a 737, an airplane, an Airbus or a Boeing airplane, and you only used it once, and then you had to build a whole new airplane to take another flight. A proposition SpaceX and Blue Origin will spend billions to perfect as it hopes what goes up LGS deploy comes back down. And live pictures of the Falcon 9 rocket, the SpaceX rocket, which uh, is climbing uh, into the atmosphere, above the atmosphere. Derek Pitts is Al Jazeera space contributor. He's the chief astronomer and director of the Fells Planetarium. He is in Philadelphia tonight. Uh, just give me your reaction to seeing this, Derek. 
Well, it looks really great. It looks like the um, first stage burn went really well, and the second stage burn has begun. And uh, it looks like it's all going very well. I know the folks at SpaceX are happy. The next, uh, the next milestone is to try to get the booster to land safely uh, back in Florida upright. And so uh, we keep our fingers crossed that that's going to work well. So uh, for, for uh, a novice like me, the, the idea of getting up into uh, space is a lot easier than it is coming down safely uh, and landing a ship like that, right? It is. This is not the kind of thing that we've been striving to do to try to land the launch vehicle again back on ground. So it requires new uh, control technologies to be able to bring it back. Before, what we do is just expend all the fuel and uh, either throw it away or allow it to splash down into the ocean and retrieve it from there. But this method of being able to land it back down on a launch pad or a landing pad on the ground certainly alleviates all of the expense of fishing it out of the ocean and all of the uh, re uh, recovery work that has to be done uh, to dry it out and all those other sorts of things. So as we mentioned, SpaceX has had some problems before. If this is successful, if it's able to land that rocket on the ground, then, then give, talk about the significance of that and what it means for SpaceX and for NASA and the whole space program. Well, what it means overall is that it opens the door for a new way of recovering launch vehicles. And this new way of recovering launch vehicles will reduce the cost and the amount of work that goes into uh, retrofitting this for use again. And the idea is the goal of reuse. The whole idea behind reusing the spacecraft, again, makes the, uh, the cost of launch less expensive. And because it becomes less expensive, then it becomes much more usable by commercial operations that want to put satellites into orbit. That then boosts the space economy. And overall, this helps agencies like NASA, because now NASA can use the same kind of capability to launch supplies to space station or to launch astronauts to space station even at a much lower cost. But the thing that always has to remember, be remembered here, John, is that safety is the first aspect of any of this work that has to be done properly. Yeah, and, and I, as we uh, try to reload the, the launch and take a look at it again here, I, you know, we've relied, this country has relied on NASA to, uh, to do the safest job that they saw possible. Is, is, is it possible for Americans to accept the fact that private industry is going to get into this and get into it in a big way and a successful way? Well, there are two ways for us to look at this, actually. One is to look at uh, how large corporations back in the early and mid-90s did something called... Uh, 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 what they did was outsourcing. They outsourced some of the more mundane or easier jobs that they had to do, and that allowed them to drive down costs of operation. So NASA, as a space agency, can think of doing that also with missions that launch materials or supplies up to International Space Station or put satellites into Earth orbit. So that kind of outsourcing can help drive down the cost of that aspect, and NASA can then focus on doing the big exploration work. But the other way to look at this, John, is to think of it in terms of how the commercial air flight business began. It started out in ways that are very, very similar, analogous to how this new industry of commercial space aspect and commercial launching is being built up right now. Yeah, it's an exciting, an exciting time for, uh, for this country and for NASA and for space exploration. Derek, good to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you, John.